We have another guest here, uh, Stephen Raymond. He is he's a man of many talents. He is knowledgeable in many areas. And today we're going to talk about men's breakthrough. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Dr. Westbrook. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Now, I had you on, I was going to have you on about something else, and then this came up, and you just do so much, and you have such a great background in health and, and well-being, you know, more from a spiritual standpoint, which is really nice, and I want to respect that. Mm. But today I'm going to talk about this men's breakthrough. I've heard about it for years. So let's start off by just telling the the viewers just a short overview of what men's breakthrough is well the men's breakthrough community, oh, community. Is, is yes uh, for the Monterey Peninsula I consider it to be an amazing resource and really a treasure a local treasure is it just Monterey it's yes it's primarily Monterey and actually they're just getting something going in Santa Cruz but it was founded by Fred Jealous who's a, a psychologist PhD uh, tangentially, he happens to be the father of Ben Jealous, who's the current president of the NAACP. Oh. But Fred is from my home state of Maine, and as a matter of fact, as you know, I'm moving back to Maine soon, and I'm going to be living in the neighborhood where he grew up, <laughs> which, which is where my son is. But the Breakthrough Men's Community, Fred started 26 years ago. Uh, he had spent... He had 87, right? That's when it started? 87, yes. Yeah. Uh, 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 yes, exactly. And uh, so he had spent time out of the country and in Turkey, and he came back to the States, and he was looking at men's issues and how men related to each other in other countries and how men related to each other from where he grew up, from where I grew up, and in this country in general. And he started doing classes, and, and so the Breakthrough Men's Community as it exists now is uh, they have introductory classes that run in two phases, there's in, uh, Breakthrough 1 and Breakthrough 2, 17 weeks and 17 weeks. And it it's a long class. It's that's a long serious stuff. It's it not just a weekend. No, no, it's not. And that's, the, that, that's a great point because that's what differentiates it from the other men's sorts of movement groups around the country, many of which I've attended and seen what they're like. So typically what you have in other men's movement groups is that they have a weekend or they have a week and guys come from all over the place and they sweat lodge kind of thing exactly <laughs> sweat lodge talking sticks barbecue. warrior training barbecue Beer. campfire right. and and a lot of good stuff but what fred focuses on is what was the early programming that we received about how to be boys how to be men and much of that is really quite dysfunctional and it paints us into a corner and we start recognizing that as we get older now obviously not everybody but for many men they get well it's an interesting statistic that the highest suicide group demographic are white men over the age of 55 hmm. now why is that no idea theoretically we're the most financially empowered we have the power position in the gender demographics and, and, and racial demographics. So why do white men over 55 have the highest suicide demographic? It's because we're taught to isolate ourselves. We're taught to suppress our natural tendency for intimacy and intimacy with other men. And this is what Fred started seeing in other countries. Why do men have easier intimate relationships with each mm -hmm. other? We're here, we're all locked into competition and defensiveness and... But go ahead, you were going to ask. Did he find that in these other countries, men had a better relationship with other men? Or yes. was it more specific to the U.S. that was more dysfunctional? That's well, I, I'm not thing. sure I can make a global commentary, but in enough other countries, Latin American countries, and in Turkey, as he was seeing, and in the Middle East, men have different kinds of relationships with each other than men do here. Okay. And so, um, for example, we can see women tend to form natural support groups among their friends. Men, men don't do that. We're the providers. We take care of things. We fix things. We solve problems. We take a wrench to it. And but it leaves something uh, missing within our hearts. We form very well adapted personalities, so as, l as, as young kids, little boys, and this is not really saying men who were abused, although many people, men and women, were abused as children. That's, that's one issue, and it fits as a subset within this category. 
But even men brought up in relatively healthy families, good families, have, somehow what they're taught to be goes against how we're wired. We are wired for community. We're made to be with other people. We're made to get support from other people. We're made to reach out for love and community. When you say we, we're all humans? We're all humans, I mean. Okay. Yes, all humans, and specifically now men. So our kind of social programming tends to go against that. We're supposed to be strong. We're supposed to hide our feelings. Um, there's, you know, our society right now is involved in a, in a major discourse about how are we willing to accept homosexuality in our society? This has been going on for a few decades now. Well, there's a certain homophobia that has existed historically where if you're a young boy, out of the fear of being gay, parents would teach kids not to express their vulnerable emotions. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's a definite homophobic trend underneath that wasn't thought of that way, but that's that's how it manifests. Yeah. That's so why we developed the uh, the hug of the back pat tug. Yeah, yeah, you know, cough, cough, cough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my buddy, my buddy. Um, so which the, is like a, a strike, really. You think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, I had done a lot of things in my life. Uh, you started by observing, you know, different things I've done. I've been involved in. Uh, I think because at a very young age I was involved in death and dying. And I started as a, as a bedside registered nurse, and I started getting a different view of what's important people at the end of, two people at the end of their lives. And also I was exposed to near-death experiences when I was very young. So I kind of had, in my very young 20s, was developing kind of an existential view that was more than just our skin encapsulated ego. You know, there's more to life than what, what appears to be true. What Fred has developed here, he's, he's created a container for men to come in, starting with this course, this two-phase, 17-week course, to address the very fundamental psychological issues. Now, what I have found in myself was I had engaged all kinds of uh, kind of deep transpersonal searching and lots of experiential psychotherapy type things. and. Um, but there came a point in my life where I felt painted into that corner that I previously mm -hmm. described. Is that because there, I mean, you do don't have to go into detail, but was there some, something in your upbringing that, you re that made you realize, wait, this, this does not feel right. I'm not relating to other humans the way I should. What, was well, some kind of Well, the realization, usually what happens with a lot of men, and as happened with me, was a relationship came to an end that was an important relationship and matter of fact, I just spent uh, the weekend with this person, um, Marsha is her name, we had had a 12-year relationship. Despite our best efforts, both good people, both loving people, but entered, it was a blended family, so it became complicated. Despite our best efforts, we found ourselves in a situation where we weren't really being able to work things out. And the kind of like the hurt and heartache I went through over that caused me to step back. And basically, I reached out to Breakthrough at that time as a lifeline. I was just like, oh, I just need to be involved with something. I'd received a great recommendation. Coming into it, into the community, I very quickly realized that what I was experiencing, the, the pain that I was experiencing, was only partially related to the loss of that relationship and that it had brought up all kinds of real fundamental childhood stuff. Mm -hmm in which now I had to really face that to be able to get on top of it and, and just discover what was going on for me. And because I had done so much self-exploration in my life, you could have knocked me over with a feather to find out that really this is this fundamental childhood stuff. In the spiritual world, they have a term for that. It's called spiritual bypassing. Or a former mentor of mine used to say, you know, that person's so spiritual they're of no earthly good. So. Somehow, I'd gone through all these other experiences, but here it was, some early childhood wounding that was still unhealed and now was right in my face. The Breakthrough Men's Community just sets up this program where you kind of go through step by step. There's classes, there's experiential work. But more than that, what I found for myself was that I needed to do that work within a community of men. And because most of my damage had occurred at the hands of men in, 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 in male environments. And I needed to go back and heal with men. My relationships with women were, well, different. I didn't have a conflicting relationship. I tended to reach to women for love. 
But now, having come through this, uh, now I'm a teacher and group leader and, and all that, you know, I've been with them long enough, um, have really come to understand some core issues that were hurting me that I had no idea were hurting me, and that's the big thing. Most people don't re actually, you're not able to recognize that this is really bothering you and that it's affecting how you relate to your spouse, how you relate to your kids, how you relate to other men. And when you start getting underneath all that, in the environment where other men are also authentically engaged in that process, wow, it's something. And it's unique in this country. There's no other community, men's community around here that has evolved in this grassroots roots fashion. So uh, I highly recommend to any man in this community who's going through a divorce, work problems, or just seeking to understand what, what that emptiness is inside him, contact this community. They have courses that start up throughout the year. So it's not, yeah, so it's pretty far reaching. It's not just men that have been abused or men that no. are in divorce or men that. No, not at all, not at all. all uh, reasons. I, I consider it, see, there's two ways to look at it. You could say, well, this is kind of a, a group of men who are screwed up and they're having to solve their problems. No, I consider it a group of enlightened men seeking self-realization in the 21st century. I am no longer satisfied with the box that I was given to define myself. I choose to define myself in a much more expanded way. And guys that have more awareness choose the same thing. Wow. That would, I looked at the website and on the mission, one of the bullet points was to celebrate uniqueness and break free from restrictive rules imposed by society. Exactly. This is what you're talking about? Exactly, precisely. What would be, give us an example of some restrictive rules. Well, you grew up as a boy and it's... Uh, uh, well, you don't cry. No, you certainly, you cer not to cry. certainly you don't cry. That is horrible, yes. Certainly you don't cry. Um, you take care of it yourself. Uh, you don't look around you for support. You take care of it yourself. It's that type of rule that creates, every one of them is like a, a wall to a box or a bar to a prison in which you're trapped inside. By the time we're six, seven, eight years old, we don't even know these things occurred. And if you're a boy in that playground, why does bullying occur? It's a good question. Okay. Because there's some kids that seem to be a little bit weaker and they get targeted and then suddenly they're marginalized from the group, they're pushed outside and uh, they end up uh, being the victims, well really both sides are the victims. The bullies are the victims because they have some kind of programming that's telling them that this kid that seems to demonstrate some kind of weakness is deserving of punishment and abuse instead of hey just friendly support and camaraderie and come on you know Fortunately, right. so, fortunately, that is hopefully turning around a little bit in our society. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the Lord of the Flies was nothing more, that, that old story was nothing more than an extreme story of what happens among young boys when they're, when they're together mm -hmm. and they're executing kind of automatically the rules that our culture has created through what? Books, movies, media, parental programming, all of it. It all comes together and plays into the same thing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Wow. And you said there are level three? There are three levels? This? Well, there's, uh, it's, it's um, after, I mean, breakthrough one, you can go through that, then breakthrough two, it's more advanced. Breakthrough three, that becomes men that have been through one and two, they learn peer support, so they learn counseling techniques, so they're able to work with each other. Breakthrough four, our self-led groups, yeah. so, th so there's a group of guys that I meet with every week. We're all close friends. We all came through the program together. We're all mature men, and we talk about our stuff. We talk about our lives in very intimate ways. One guy's down, other guy's there to support him. Sometimes it's just celebratory and we're having a good time. It's, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, uh, there's a closeness and richness there that I have not enjoyed previously in men relationships. And that's, and you've been on, you've been through three or well, I, I'm in, I, I'm, like I said, I I'm, I'm, uh, have gone through all that, have the ongoing breakthrough four, and then I'm a group leader in, uh, in so teaching the introductory courses one and two, I'm, I'm involved in that, teaching that as well. Okay. Yeah. Does uh, Fred Gell still teach? Fred, amazingly, yeah, he comes in and does some teaching. There's uh, typically a class will be two presenters and then a team 
there's two presenters that are paid. There's a team of 20 to 22 men who are all volunteers, and that's one of the strengths of the organization is that that the men who volunteer to help teach these classes and lead these classes, they're getting something back. It's kind of like graduate work. You're going through it again, you're teaching it to younger men or, or newer men coming through. And a typical class will start with about 30 to 32 participants and then 22 uh, leader teacher types. Mm. It's a rich environment, a very rich environment. I went to the NTL Institute of Applied Behavioral Sciences. I started doing T group stuff back in the 70s. I've done stuff on racism, sexism, all the transpersonal therapy stuff. This is a really rich, deep mm -hmm. learning environment. Is it a little different than your typical maybe psychology uh, therapies or? You know, there, it's not that out of the box, and that's what was <laughs> uh, I, I, that's what was amazing to me. It was I was not unfamiliar with the concepts, and I was not even unfamiliar with some of the issues within myself. What really became clear to me, startling clear, was how deeply laid in these things could be, and things that I thought I had put in the past a long time before. It became really clear to me: no, these I was not done with these, and that I needed to do this work in a group of men. Is it partly the environment that's created, having the opportunity to Absolutely. be authentic with other men? A that, that, that is it. Uh, it's the curriculum, but it's the environment. It's being authentic with other men, and then it's also there's a certain power that comes with bearing witness and then also having witness born to you as you are willing to open up and, and be authentic within that group in a deeper way than you ordinarily would. So you have a classroom of about 50 guys then? Yeah. Can imagine, it seems like breakthrough one, it seems like it would be hard to get that started. You know, getting guys to be able to well, what happens, let go. Yeah, what happens is typically on a, so a, a class is a three and a half hour night and uh, about the first hour plus will be didactic. So the presenters give some material. So it might be boundaries or esteem or love or communication or any number of things. So in our class, and then we break up into small groups. And in our center, which is on Valley Way in Carmel, uh, there's a number of small rooms. So then we break out into small rooms. And so for me, example, as a group leader, so we'll have like about 10 small rooms going on. And a, a group leader will go into a small room with an ally and then three men participants. And so then we go through a smaller, more intimate emotional process within that room of discussion that ties in with the theme of the evening. Mm -hmm. And it builds up incrementally over that 34 weeks. It's, it's quite a process to go through. And one level would be 34 weeks? One level is 17 weeks, and level two is another 17 weeks. You know who some of our biggest supporters in this community are? Who? Wives. Wives? Wives. Wives love us. Yeah. They're, they're like, wow, you know, my, my husband's hurting, he's stuck, there's something going on. Half of our guys come to end up coming to us because they're trying to, they want to hang on to their marriage, they want to improve their communication, and so we get a tremendous amount of support in this community from the women within mm -hmm. the community. Is there a similar women's group? There is. It's, uh, it's uh, called Break Free, run by a woman named Janet Thomas, and it's not quite, it's not as deep and layered as ours because she runs it by herself and she works with smaller groups of women, but still a very rich program. I recommend it to women. I have many women friends that have gone through it. Oh, what is the age range for this? Is it typically a middle, I mean, a middle-aged man? 17 to... The youngest I've seen is 17, and he's in our group right now, and we have, I've, I'm trying to think of the oldest I've seen, um, thinking of a couple guys, at mid-70s, so it's, qui it's quite a range. Yeah, you see guys 40s, 50s, 20s, 30s, I, I, and I like that richness about it. I like the multi-generational aspect about it. Mm. Is there any hope to <laughs> make these, uh, these changes earlier instead of having to get to you know, 40, 50 years of age and then trying to work through stuff that should have never started back when you were a kid? The main reason that I am moving back to Maine is my... Was that a pun intended? Yes, <laughs> pun intended, is uh, my three grandchildren. I have a lot in the way of love and mature, evolved support to provide to my son's family, to be present for my son. Uh, to reconnect with him at this different phase of his life. He's 41 years old now, and he's 
busy with his family and he's a chiropractor as you know chiropractor must be a great guy he's a terrific guy <laughs> terrific guy uh, but I have my two little grandsons and my granddaughter and uh, a huge part of my intent is you know I get that this is about love it's about as Fred Jealous would say getting on a love track being understand being able to understand because we have very distorted ideas about what love is and when you get in touch with the authentic giving and receiving of love instead of just based on trying to satisfy some unmet need from your childhood and being a child in a man's body but instead being able to give proper attention to your children and give them proper appreciation and affection and allowance uh, we call it the five A's. It's out of the work of, of uh, David Rico. I missed one of the A's there, and I won't waste time trying to remember it. But there's, there's, um, there's a satisfaction that I feel in myself. Fred calls it creating a more fulfilling life. There's a satisfaction that I feel in myself that was absent for me previously. And it's come from being able to go back and let go of some of the old stuff, bring in some of the new stuff, have better relationships with men and if, and for men out there who want to have better relationships with women one of the ways to do that is improve your relationships with men that's what I've discovered interesting mm. yeah mm. so being able to relate to one sex and carry over to the other one well it's about waking up growing up showing up lightening up and maturing actually becoming a man and, and for those of us, and I include myself in this happily, happily recognizing that I was there and happily uh, recognizing that I'm moving out of it. We call it progress, not perfection, but there's that hurt inner child and being able to go back and take care of that within yourself because other people aren't gonna be able to take care of it for you. A woman's not gonna be able to satisfy that for you. Acquiring things is not going to satisfy that for you. Infinite success in your career is not going to satisfy that for you. Those are adaptive mechanisms. But getting underneath that and getting right down into the core and filling in the core, that's what, what creates a more fulfilling life. It sounds exciting. I find it very exciting, and I find it exciting to share with men. One of my sadnesses in moving to Maine is uh, leaving this community of men behind. Uh, I'm fortunate that my work will enable me to travel here a few times a year, and I'm hoping with the Breakthrough Men's Community to be able to evolve something where I can start bringing it to the, to the community in Maine where Fred Jealous first came from himself. That's what I was going to ask you, if there is an opportunity for that in any other place besides the peninsula. Yeah, it's, the, thing, the things that make it make the Breakthrough Men's Community unique are also what makes it difficult to just transport it somewhere else. It's not just throwing on a workshop, it's how do you get men who have the gravitas and are grounded enough and centered enough uh, to be able to hold a container and develop a community that, that evolves over time. Because again, it's not just a workshop. So there's men, there's a board of directors in the Breakthrough Men's Community that are actively uh, looking at these issues. How can we bring it out to the rest of the world? And I do hope to be an active part of that. Oh. Okay. Now this is a, is a nonprofit organization? It's a nonprofit, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. But and I'm not asking the cost, but is there a cost to participate? In there this? is, and uh, this is another one of the amazing things about the community. Um, the way they set it up is Fred Jealous, the founder, Lee Garland, who is, who is a director, uh, Rick Moss, who's a local luminary, and he's one of the presenters there. Danny Kruger, Ken Genry. There's a commitment within the organization to try to leave no man out. So they do introductory meetings, and in the meetings we say, yeah, there is a cost, but there's also a sliding scale. And if men are not able to afford to come in, we don't leave men out. We welcome men in and we find a way to make it all work. So men that can pay do pay. The men that cannot, we create a sliding scale to make it possible for them to come in. Wow. About how many men do you think have gone through this program? Uh, there's, uh, I think we're around 1,800 now. And I want to throw out one more thing. There was Blue Cross of California did a two-year study on the Breakthrough Men's Community and uh, to try to apply some metrics to see what the effect of this, of this was. That study is available on the, oh my God, I, it, well, look, Google Breakthrough for Men, and that study is on the website. You'll be able to see, there's a documented effectiveness to the work that's done there. Wow, that's great, mm. wow. 
Well, we have about a minute left. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to leave with the viewers about men's breakthrough, maybe or words of wisdom? I think I've said it about men's breakthrough. I'd like to leave the viewers with a word of appreciation for you. <laughs> you are a pillar in this community. You're involved in so many positive things. I've appreciated getting to know you. You're a good man, and I also want to pitch Monterey Peninsula Toastmasters. Go ahead, Cont pitch away. <laughs> it's a great group. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful organization. You are a senior elder member in that community, and uh, I would encourage anybody who wishes to even remotely approach you in professionalism and speaking skill to check in with you about joining that organization. Well said. All right. I like that. Thanks that to TSA. you. <laughs> I, I couldn't say a word before I came here. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you're pretty good behind your own there. <laughs> well, I really appreciate those kind words. All right. Well, and thanks. It I'm has one of those been guys that gets choked up, so. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, that's good. That's an authentic. That's, that's a good thing. Yeah. That's being authentic. All right. I like yeah. that. And those, uh, those romantic comedies, you know, it's, it's always an allergy, right? You know, and I'm watching. <laughs> no, I got something in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> I got but it. That's great. I got it. But I appreciate your time and sharing that with with us, and hopefully Maine will be fantastic. You know, spread this across the country. Well, uh, one small step at a time, but yes, first my grandkids, and then break through men's community if right. we can. Thanks. <laughs>